Hi, this is Brad Miller, and I just want to take a couple minutes to show you some of the unique interactive features of the textbooks that we've been working on here at interactivepython.org. So, the first thing I'd like to show you is this. Imagine that you're a student and you're reading along and you get to some code in your textbook. Now, ordinarily you'd have to kind of study this and try to figure out how it works, but if the with a truly interactive book, you can simply click on the Run button, and right there in the book, you can see the results of running that code. Now, when you think about it, what you really want students to do in an interactive uh, textbook or as they're learning computer science is you'd like students to, to play around and uh, experiment with the code that you've provided for them. So let's just suppose here that instead of going forward by 50, we want to change this last line to say uh, go forward by 90. So right here in the textbook we can make that change, click on the Run button, and see a different result. We can do that as many times as we want, make as many changes as we want. Now, if you happen to be a registered user on our site, which you can do for free, you can simply save this and notice when you reload the page, you're back to the same original program. If you run it, you get the original version back. But now if I click on the load button, uh, there comes my change. So I can run it again and I can save and reload these changes. Uh, so that's a great way of encouraging people to learn by doing and learn by experimenting. Another nice thing that we have with our interactive textbooks is the ability to play and embed video in the book. And so here's an example of a, a thumbnail that represents uh, a little video. And I'm going to stop this so that it doesn't play because uh, you don't want to hear my recording of me recording my recording. So, but again, these are uh, can be embedded right in the text. Uh, a lot of times they're good for uh, explaining um, what might be complicated material um, in, in both a verbal and a written sense. Okay, a couple of other things to show you here. Another nice thing that we have embedded uh, in this book are these self-check little quizzes or tests. So they can be fill in the blank, true or false questions, multiple choice, anything like that. So you can read the question uh, and you can pick out the correct answer here. It allows us to create a data object called turtle. You click on check me and it will tell you if you're correct. If uh, I had clicked on the wrong answer, nothing, it is unnecessary, uh, it will give us, uh, tell us that we're incorrect and give us a little explanation. Uh, if I click on a different incorrect answer, I will see a different explanation for why that answer is wrong. Okay, here's another really cool thing that we have. We call this Code Lens, and in Code Lens, it's a little bit like having an interactive uh, debugger in your, in your book, only uh, it actually has some advantages over the debugger. Um, it allows, what we think it does is it allows the students to get an idea uh, to help build a mental model of, of how the programming language works. That is, how do loops work? Uh, how does a function call work? Uh, how does even just that simple sequential operation of a program do? So here's a Python program. Uh, you click on forward. Now you can see that the first thing that the program do does is it creates a global variable called square which defines a function. The next thing it does is creates a global variable called two square. And now we're going to call that square function and assign that result to square result. So when we click forward here you can see we go to the square function now we're in the square function and you can see that we have a couple of local variables x which corresponds to our parameter and running total which is initialized to zero now we can step forward and go through this loop a few times and a few more times and we'll keep running that until we get to our uh, return value which is a hundred we're getting ready to return, so we click forward one more time. 
Uh, we've now returned. We can see the result of our global variable here, square result. Our local variables disappeared, and we can see the output of our, of our program here in the bottom. If we missed something, we can back up one step at a time. We can go all the way back to the beginning, or we can go all the way forward to the end. So this is a great interactive way that mimics what we used to have to do in the olden days of tracing through programs on paper. Finally, the last thing I'll show you is just uh, this idea of a scratch editor. So what we learned from using this book in class was that a lot of times students really wanted a place to take notes or just try out some, uh, try out some simple things on their own, which they can easily do with this scratch editor. And here's one last example. Here's a homework exercise. You're asked to write a function that would uh, it's called sum to n that would return the sum of all the integers up to an including n. And uh, we have a simple unit test sort of framework that we've embedded uh, in this Python language. So if uh, we change this, instead of to being commented out, we always return zero uh, for our sum to n function. And we click run. Now we can see that uh, our first test, uh, sum to zero, passed. Uh, but sum to 10 and sum to 1, uh, both of those tests failed. So it's a great way uh, for us to be able to provide immediate feedback to the students as to whether or not they're getting, um, getting the answer correct, writing the function correctly. If you're just using, a, using this site to learn on your own, uh, it's a great way for you to know whether you're, uh, whether you're getting it right or not. So these are just uh, some of the features that I think are some of the highlights. Uh, we invite you to uh, come to interactivepython.org and make a user for yourself and, uh, or not and uh, jump into one of our two uh, books that we have. We have this How to Think Like a Computer Scientist and we have our Data Structures textbook program, uh, Problem Solving with Algorithms and Data Structures Using Python. So we hope to see you there and thanks for stopping by.